understand you need the supreme leaders of Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey to tell you what's true and hide everything else from you to protect you from your own thoughts. <laughs> it's not condescension, it's protection. Believe what the media tells you. As you watch propaganda constantly being fed to you by the media, just believe that the propaganda they're feeding you is true. <laughs> because it's in English, not Chinese. So you can trust it. Treat safety as your life's purpose. Instead of being brave, just live in denial that death is part of reality as you enjoy your passionate pursuit of safety. But just know you can eventually come out of the coffin of your comfort zone once there's no more death in the world because then it'll be safe. Bonus obedience! With your health and well-being, blindly trust computer programmers who have been found guilty in federal antitrust lawsuits. Never question corrupt authorities. Yep, you better serve your global corporate banking overlords or you'll go to jail, just like a business owner did today in Toronto, which of course we're gonna be talking about for the horrible crime of operating a business, all in the backdrop of a major Supreme Court decision that might actually change everything from here. We're gonna be talking about that plus a lot more. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ukradowski here of wearechange.org. And of course the intro video was just a short excerpt from Awaken with JP Spears. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel the link to that will be down in the description below specifically to this video and even though what he said was absolutely satire in our modern day truth is stranger than fiction also happy thanksgiving you amazing son of a gun without you guys being here i wouldn't be here so i hope today you're finding gratitude just like i am and every simple amazing blessing that we are given today i definitely know things aren't the best for the vast majority of people out there. Ah, oh, crap. I was going to say something optimistic, but I'm truly, I'm truly at a loss for words here. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to look up lazy, optimistic quotes here. Early bird gets the worm. Okay, okay, at least it's not boring. We got an opportunity to, to prove ourselves and actually be the best versions of ourselves in the utter craziness that's unfolding right now. Okay, fine. That's it. Also, just another reminder here, the problems that we're facing in our modern day society don't just come from a left-right perspective, but generally a tyrannical overlord ideology that people need to be ruled and controlled, and those ideas are perpetrated from the top down, not from the left-right, which is mainly used as a division to keep us separated away from each other. The best way to control someone is to deny them information, and that's what snobby, statist, establishment elites have been doing for a very long time and that's why as edward snowden points out that this entire war on whistleblowers which has been perpetrated by the left and right is essentially the criminalization of of journalism once you criminalize journalism no one will be able to find out exactly what's going on and they won't be able to see the true evils in our society so yeah if journalism is not outlawed it usually is also just stomped out by the big tech monoliths out there that of course either downranked it or demonetized it but hey with every negative action there is almost an equal positive reaction and because of the efforts against us we opened up a merchandise store and offering up a way for people to express their political ideas in ways which they can't be censored i of course wear my own merchandise all the time as you can see especially the hats especially the shirts i get stopped i get a lot of comments about them all the time this is truly a great way to reach out to a large number of individuals they also make great presents some of them are pretty funny like this i'm joe biden and i forgot this message t-shirt some are positive some are uplifting and of course make sure to scroll down to see our sweater sock and bikini collection <laughs> as of course we i think we almost have over a hundred items right now listed on the store check them all out in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code which is running right now for black friday now in yesterday's video we talked about a small business in canada that decided to stay open and because this small business decided to stay open they faced the wrath of the government a large number of people came out to the business to support it and it looked like the people finally were able to win against the big bad government but this morning we got very disturbing details that government officials snuck into the private business of adamson's barbecue 
changed the locks so the business owner could not get in and then established a major police perimeter with riot police officers along with horses preventing people from using the business. Shortly after, the man who owned the business was arrested and charged when, of course, he tried to enter his own business, which was made illegal and criminal in Canada. It's also important to note that the mayor of this city that's enforcing these made-up decrees is also a politician that, of course, supported Black Lives Matter protests, helped people make a living, prevent people from going into poverty. Now that is criminalized with the full extent of all government resources and the police state that obeys these very hypocritical decrees by politicians. Again, seeing these images of a man arrested just tr trying to make ends meet, just trying to make sure his employees could make a living, to make sure his business could stay afloat, is an absolute horrible example of too much government and a nanny state that is out of control that literally promotes social gatherings of protests that they approve of, but hardworking business owners will be put in jail. This is, again, just a level of hypocrisy that is absolutely cruel, and in my opinion, a total akin of abuse of power. And of course, since this business owner made a stand against some of these hypocritical government policies and decrees, it definitely seems like he was targeted, selected, heavily fined, and arrested for his actions of daring to question the ever so changing prevailing narrative of the establishment and we have to understand similar crackdowns are happening all throughout the United States and the world right now as of course major monopoly multinational corporations like Walmart and Amazon are allowed to be open meanwhile poor people become poorer with small and independent businesses being crushed by a government who's friends with these big multinational corporations and is literally destroying any form of competition that they have. In New York, police officers are literally, literally rushing crowded buses, demanding the address of passengers. Vermont government officials started interrogating students. Los Angeles government officials have shut down any form of indoor and outdoor dining as they just expanded their quarantine. And just like we covered yesterday, many of these declarations and decrees by politicians like outdoor dining, specifically as we mentioned in yesterday's video, there's no scientific backing that it actually helps or doesn't help in any way. A lot of these decisions aren't backed by science, and the government track tracing and databasing you for you trying to spend time with your family. Meanwhile, this is the same police department and government officials that run them that were literally promoting protests a few days ago. Some of these these people were literally celebrating in the streets in massive crowds far bigger than the ones that you're seeing here selected by the mainstream media for selective outrage but yet we didn't hear anything about that no that was uh, okay which, which again this huge layer of hypocrisy doesn't help anyone at all and sadly many officers aren't even questioning some of the logic they're just taking the orders and executing them without an iota of iq or intelligence not even daring to question the orders that they are given but some officers are as some of them are coming out and saying it's going to be absolutely impossible to enforce all of these decrees. This, of course, is met by utter shock and sharp criticism by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo that literally is making up decrees as he goes along. And these, this is important to understand here. These are not laws. These are, these are decrees. There was no ruling body that voted and approved many of these restrictions by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo as he literally is just signing executive orders that luckily now have been overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court, specifically the decree where New York Governor Andrew Cuomo limited the amount of people that could worship together. In a very close decision, the Supreme Court ruled five to four, granting Catholic diocese and Orthodox 
Jews the right to worship today, deeming that un Andrew Cuomo's decrees to block them from doing so was unconstitutional, and uh, right rightfully so. And this is going to set a very important precedent that's going to play out with the next few days, weeks, and months, as of course the government's going to be imposing more lockdowns that of course are going to be challenged legally in the Supreme Court. Justice Amy Coney Barrett, the newly appointed Supreme Court Justice, was the major decision maker here, and she of course voted in favor of religious groups against Andrew Cuomo, and rightfully so. We have to understand, Andrew Cuomo, the mayor of New York City, the police department of New York City, actively joined and promoted mass gatherings on scales of thousands of people, if not tens of thousands of them, for their own political purpose, for their own political game, not so long ago. And for these duplicitous, double-speaking, cold-blooded, lizard-like individuals to say you can't do something, meanwhile we do it ourselves, is absolutely a stab in the back for anyone deciding to take the situation seriously. And it's one of the reasons why people aren't. I'm sorry, but if you want people to take your rules and your decrees seriously, you should take them seriously yourself as literally the New York governor has a brother that's running around violating mask mandates and even violating his own quarantine going outside on little day trips when he had the conholio sickness himself so I I I'm sorry once we deal with the utter I'm sorry but once we deal with this kind of nasty disgust disgusting, unfair behavior, then we could really start taking the situation seriously. But until we do, many people won't. And again, the actions of the New York governor from the beginning of this, sending sick patients to elderly homes, where the vast majority of deaths came from this entire sickness, calling police officers who didn't enforce his decrees tyrants, and now coming out and saying that this Supreme Court ruling is irrelevant? When you're destroying people's livelihoods, deciding who can keep their business open, who can go where, who could practice what religion, what you have to wear, what laws you yourself choose to ignore. I'm sorry, but that's the direct description of a tyrannical dictator. And for the New York governor to come out today and say this very important Supreme Court ruling is, quote, irrelevant to him, just shows you the decree and disdain that these individuals have for the actual rule of law and constitutional rights that we have inherited god-given rights that andrew como obviously has total disdain for in my opinion now again it's hard not to get worked up here since of course we when you're actually not in a high tower when you actually know people that are destroyed by these policies that are having their livelihoods their businesses their wealth their lives taken away from them and put in depression put into poverty it's hard not to get frustrated, especially when you see the tragedy that's unfolding right now. There is an unprecedented demand for food banks right now. There's millions of people going hungry, and there's literal lines in entire communities of people just trying to get what little food they can. This video that you're watching right now is just one of the lines here in Flatbush, New York, where people are hoping to get a little bit of extra food for themselves and their family members since, of course, any kind of economic opportunity, any kind of economic freedom for people to actually make it out on their own has been taxed, regulated, controlled, or shut down by the government here in New York. Some of the few jobs are only available for the large multinational globalist corporations, and even some of them are becoming more and more difficult to get, as even Disney announced that they will be laying off 32,000 workers, since, of course, they are losing a lot of money during this entire situation. But hey, even then, if you have a job at a corporation, if you could somehow keep it and sustain it, some of them might even force an experimental medicine on you, which if you refuse, you could probably lose your employment. And even if there won't be a government mandate to force this, quote, medication on you, there definitely will be some multinational corporations trying to achieve this goal. But I do think there should be some caution and some specific questions regarding this experimental medicine. 
as there are even, quote, accidental <laughs> cases of the wrong dosages given during trial runs that have shown, quote, amazing results. Again, when you have an, an, an industry that's accident prone, that doesn't have any liability, Again, many of these major companies making this new experimental, quote, medicine, a lot of them don't face any legal repercussions at all. They are protected by the states, by the courts. If they make a mistake, if they do something wrong with ill intent or by accident, there's there's nothing to hold them accountable. What, what, what kind of incentive is that? And uh, I think that's a very bad one, especially when it comes to a first of its kind ever medicine experiment that, again, we don't know how it will play out or the very long term effects of it. But in my opinion, I think we should definitely test this experimental jab first on government officials. If it's safe on them, then the medicine is good. If it's not safe for them, then the country's good. Either way, win-win. And if you agree with this idea that politicians who advocate for this, as well as the heads of the corporations of these multinational corporations talking and promoting this idea, if you think it's a great idea that they go first from this experimental medicine jab, click like and share this video because that messaging needs to get out there to the general public that is usually naive to a lot of these bigger ideas and concepts that are hidden away from them, their timelines, and of course, any form of real discussion. The only thing stopping this from being widely discussed, talked about, and even practiced is you deciding yourself to talk about it, to share these videos, and to vote with your clicks. You are more important than ever, and that's why because of you, I wouldn't be here. And this is why I love you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the time we have right now because we actually have an opportunity to do something amazing. Stay tuned for more here on We Are Change dot org.